Well, this episode is the rudder. When I started doing the video for this, I wasn't really sure the level of detail I wanted to show early on. So I didn't really catch a whole lot on the first part of this build. Subsequently, I decided that I, I'm gonna show a little more detail, maybe explain things a little more. Um, you'll see that in upcoming episodes with the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer. So for this particular episode, it's gonna be a little light on the front side. I didn't really show a whole lot. Uh, I did end up uh, shooting some more video through the process uh, after I had the, uh, the spar and the ribs all built up and getting the skins and stuff on, um, checking it for any twist or anything. I showed some more detail there. So this video is gonna be uh, a little different. Subsequent videos to follow will probably be a little more detailed from, from you know beginning to end. So just wanted to make that note and uh, let's build a rudder. Bolting up the tube here to the uh, rudder spar, the manual calls for a stack up of washers there, and eh, it's fine. Um, I prefer to use a spacer, so I just turned down a little spacer uh, on my lathe, dropped it in there. I like that a little better. I've tried a combination of uh, um, solid rivets. And then I've also tried a couple of their pulled rivets. I did solid rivets here, and I also did uh, solid rivets uh, on this piece here, which gets a doubler on it. Um, I think I'm going to use solid rivets where I can, where there's an where, there, where it's called for an aluminum pulled rivet, and where I have easy access for a bucking bar. I'll go ahead and do the solid rivet. These are. I'm sure, I mean, obviously they're fine because these airplanes are flying, but just something about a solid rivet, you know, if I can do it, I will. Um, but this thing's going to go together, I think, pretty pretty easily. Everything's lining up and it's just really simple. I want to take a moment and talk about uh, a change I'm making to the kit. Uh, I want to make sure that I explain that I'm in no way saying that the kit is inferior or has some kind of a design weakness or flaws. Not at all. Uh, it's just that for me, um, I do a lot of industrial engineering, industrial design, robotics, and you know, it's the way my brain works. Uh, I see certain things and I'm like, eh. I think I'd like to have it, you know, this way. And I, I identified a couple areas where I felt a little more comfortable making a change. So I'll talk about that, but I just wanted to make sure I expressed that I am in no way, shape or form saying that the uh, RAND's design uh, in these areas that I'm making some changes, uh, there's something wrong with it. Uh, there certainly isn't. Again, it's just something that I feel I wanna do.
One of the changes I've decided to make is doublers where the vertical stabilizer, rudder, horizontal stabilizer, and elevator hinges are. Because I'm doing solid rivets, uh, I decided that I wanted a little extra thickness there. Um, so I've drew these up. I'm cutting these from uh, 062, 6061 aluminum. And they're just, uh, it's just a doubler plate where the rivets for the hinges will, hin will rivet through. Uh, and then I'm just spreading this load across a larger surface area here. And I'll be riveting these, the, the doubler to the spar with these uh, dash three rivets here. So this is just one of the changes I made. Uh, we'll see that here. Here's a finished one here. Just 6061, 063. I drew these up in SolidWorks. I sent the, the uh, saved them as a DXF file, saved them off to send, cut, send. Had the parts in about a week. They do really nice cutting. Uh, they water jet, so you do need to kind of sand the edges. They're a little rough. You need to sand and kind of break the sharp edges there, but uh, otherwise, good parts. Getting set up to drive a solid rivet on my hinges. This is a change I've decided to do, the solid rivets instead of the pulled rivets here. I've already got this one in. I'll show you on the back side here what we've got. Again, I've also added the doubler here. Uh, that's a change I made. But I've got one rivet down there. I bought these rivets long and I'm cutting them to size with my rivet cutter. I've got this one set and ready to go. I wanna keep everything nice and in line, the hinges. So temporarily run a bolt through there with a stack up of washers there. I'm gonna go ahead and put a nut over here and just kind of lightly cinch it down. And this is just gonna keep the uh, the hinges collinear, that hole there, keep it all in line. Uh, I would do this if I was driving the solid rivets or, or pulling the rivets. So if you're pulling the rivets, I'd consider doing that. It just keeps everything nice and straight in line while you're uh, doing your riveting. So. I'm gonna go ahead and drive this one. All right, again, nice and straight, everything in line. Good. I'm gonna flip this around. Clamp it in place again. There we go. Good and straight. Clamp is secure. Let's drive it. Heads look good. And let's take a look at the back. Looks good visually. I'll, I'll get my uh, calipers out and check the expansion here and the depth just to verify, but it looks pretty good. Measured the shop heads here after riveting check them for spec, go, no go. And this one here and this one here uh, don't quite meet the expansion, which is one and a half times rivet diameter. I'm about 20,000 small on both of those. These checked out okay on both the expansion and the uh, height. Those are good. I'm gonna go ahead and knock this one a little bit and that one a little bit. Got my hinges all installed here on the rudder. Everything turned out really good. I checked all the measurements again on the shop heads. Everything checks out to spec. And I'm happy with how that turned out. So um, moving on to completing this thing now. What I would say is if you're not comfortable with driving solid rivets, 
Um, definitely don't make this change. Um, don't do what I did. <laughs> do, it, do your plane to the plans. Where I'm deviating from the plans, um, I'm not taking it lightly. I'm not just going willy-nilly doing this. Uh, I'm calculating what I want to do, where I want to do it. This was a change I wanted to make. Uh, and I'm only making changes that I know are well within my capability of, of doing it. The rivets on the hinges, as an example, the number six rivets, um, if you, I've only done threes and fours uh, in the past. Sixes are tough to drive. There's a lot of opportunity to really screw things up, get it crooked, and then you're just, you're messing with drilling rivets out and, and now you're gonna uh, elongate holes and it, it could just turn into a real big mess real quick. So I don't recommend it. Um, also, you know, uh, I'm putting number six solid rivets in there because the holes are 3 16 They're 3 16 because Rands chose to use pulled rivets. Uh, if they had decided to do a solid rivet from the get-go, they would have probably done a number four or a number five. So these rivets are completely overkill for this application. I just did that because that's what the hole size was. So there's just a lot of reasons not to do it. So I guess I would say um, don't do what I'm doing. Um, stick to the plans. The aircraft is designed fine. Um, don't get crazy and do the things I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, rudder framework in the rudder skin, get it clecoed up, and start working on getting uh, everything set for the twist so I can match drill the opposite side and uh, then proceed to deburr and then get the rudder assembled. It's gonna give me the opportunity to use my new toy. It's a pneumatic Clico driver. And uh, I got problems with my wrist and finger sometimes and I've, Doing a lot of clecos, it really start to hurt, and I thought, let me let me try one of these out, and I think it's going to be a help. It's I don't think it's any faster. In fact, I think it's probably slower than using pliers, but it's going to save my forearm and, and hand. I'll still use the pliers just to insert the first few, because I've got to kind of maneuver the cleco in there easier done with the pliers. Works pretty good. Using this pick right here really helps if you got holes that aren't quite lining up. Put the lower rib in. This just inserts in the bottom. This side's all clecoed up. I'll go ahead and flip it over and get it ready to be fixtured so that I can check for twist and match drill them. Got the rudder fixtured up here. What I've done is I've just used my three inch by one inch aluminum extrusions. Just some scraps that I have. I've got one under each rib and I very lightly clamped the trailing edges down at each end. You don't want to bear down on that. You'll bend or deform the trailing edge there. So that's just enough to hold it in place. I've got my lead bags across the front spar holding everything down there. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take my level and I'll take a reading at the ends. Make sure that those match up. I'll shim as necessary. I may even take readings in the middle. Although if the ends are straight and everything is setting on these, in theory, those are going to be straight as well. So I'll get that set up now. Okay, on this end, I'll set the level here. Now there is a little bit of flex in the skin, so I'm going to apply just a little bit of pressure so that I'm 
everything's nice and tight against the extrusion there. And I'm getting about 8.65. So I'll take it to the other side and see what I get. On the rib, get the little pressure and I got 8.6, 8.65 flickering. So I'm gonna call that good. Here's the, one of the middle ribs there. Get that set. And I got about 8.6, 8.65. That's good. Come over here. And I've got uh, about an 8.6. So I'm within five hundredths of a degree at each station. That is plenty good enough. I'll go ahead now, make sure that everything is secured. Might throw a couple more bags on there uh, while I get some of these ribs. And then I'll go ahead and, and drill all that, match drill the spar. And at that point, it's ready to take it apart deeper and assemble. The big moment. This match drilling after checking for twist and shimming and everything is required. Once you drill these holes, that's it. And it's a little, I'm a little apprehensive, but you gotta do it. I've triple checked everything. All my angles are, are good. So it's time to just suck it up and drill some holes. I'm gonna change my bit, it's a little dull. The side is all match drilled and clecoed and done. So I'll take it apart now and deburr everything. One recommendation I would make before taking this all apart to deburr, the, the manual doesn't say to do this, but uh, I would recommend go ahead and cleco in your leading edge now after you've got everything match drilled. Go ahead and cleco that in and the reason is this, it's gonna tell you how, how much difficulty you're gonna have getting these to line up, depending on how your forming went. Uh, if You may need to form it a little more, or put a tighter bend in it. Um, it's, you wanna know that now, because now it's all together. This is where you're gonna find out where that happens. And this way, when you take it apart uh, to go ahead and deburr, that'd be your opportunity to maybe do a little bit more work on your leading edges. Uh, in this case, on mine, everything lined right up, uh, but I just wanted to kind of verify that. So now I know that once I take all these Clecos out and I deburr, when I go back together the last time, it will be the last time I won't have to take anything apart and do any adjustments. Oh, and before you take it apart, don't forget to match drill your lower rib here through this hole in this tab. I think I would recommend a slight change in the plans in that... I would leave the hinges off until after you've put the skin over this assembly, checked it for twist, and match drilled. Because the problem is it's, it's almost impossible for me to get in here and deburr. I'll have to get a little piece of sandpaper in there. It would just be so much easier if the hinges weren't in the way. Um, maybe I would make that change if I was to do this again. Do all that deburr. Then I'd go ahead and put the hinges in before I would uh, do a finish assembly on this. These spacers called out in the uh, manual. They give you some stock and you have to cut these yourself. Uh, I used my lathe, a uh, perfect tool for this. Uh, cut these to 500 and 10 thousandths. And that gives me just a nice slip fit in between there. So I'll go ahead and get these put into place because once I skin over that, I'm not gonna be able to get to those. 
And I think at that point, I am probably ready to go ahead and insert that in there and rivet it up. Got everything clicked back together here and I'm getting the leading edges lined up and you can see they don't really line up very well. You kind of have to work them. And what I've been doing is taking a pick here and say I want to put a Clico there, I'll come over on this side and I'll just fish this pick down in there and catch both holes and then I'll pull it down and kind of stick it in a little bit. You'll notice when I do that, that hole comes into line, I can pop a Clico in there, do the same thing and work my way down. It works out really well. One thing I just realized is the manual calls out for drilling the leading edge out to number 30. But it doesn't say to do that until the very end. And the problem is now I can't get in and very easily deburr inside there. So um, this would be a good, well, ideally what you would do is do that, clico it all together, um, drill it all out. Then de when you deburr everything else, deburr those. Well, I didn't do that. I didn't think ahead enough. I just go and buy the manual. Um, but that's okay because this is where I'll use my in and out See if I can focus my in and out deburring tool. And uh, what this is is a little uh, blade that's on a spring. And it's kind of hard to show, but what you do is you just you insert it, give it just a little spin, push it through, which I can't do with another hand. Uh, push it through and give it a slow rotation while you're kind of pulling back on it, then stop and then pull it through. And that lets you deburr the outside and the inside on each of these. And then what I can do is I can get a chip chaser in there and pull out any chips that are in between. So it's a way to let you deburr holes that, uh, after the fact um, without having to worry about pulling everything apart again. Perfect use for that tool there. Well, I'm happy to report that the rudder is done. Everything went together really okay. No issues and uh, really happy with it. My first finished part. Well, that's it for the rudder build. Horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer builds are coming up in episodes soon. So stay tuned for those. Uh, those episodes will have a little more consistent content throughout the episode. Uh, again, this one didn't really catch a whole lot as I was assembling the rudder uh, in the beginning, but I did kind of pick up as you saw and showed a little more detail on the end and I'm gonna try to maintain that consistency uh, through new episodes that are coming. So stay tuned for the other ones coming, hopefully gonna drop the horizontal stabilizer build maybe in another week or two.